Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 504 at scavengerlife.com. Last week, yeah. I feel like we made a little bit of a big deal out of it. We're like, we're going to post this argument we had. And uh, hey, everyone's like, what's uh, the And it's interesting. I mean, people were saying um, uh, it sounded like a business meeting. And that's <laughs> yeah, basically what it was. That sounds correct to me. And... I think, too, that was uh, a very, uh, we don't fight a lot, but that was a, a good, reasonable, heated discussion. And I think it's tough. I mean, I, I know there are other people out there that you like run an eBay business and other kind of businesses with their partners. And it's tough, you know, it's yeah. tough to juggle talking about money that's intertwined with your personal life. Right. You know, and... And on top of that, like uh, making time for it yourself for private time from yeah, each other. Yeah, non-business time well, right. or time alone from each other. Yeah, because right. we work together, we live together, we eat every meal together practically. Right. right. I mean, and it's for us that is important. I mean, we set time aside where, I mean, we don't, it's not formal, but we get away from each other. And yeah. And do, do our own thing. Totally. And that's important. I think that is yeah. important, yeah. But uh, but it's good for us to always be having those conversations. Yeah. When even if things get tough, because those tough conversations, if you don't have them, problems can grow and fester and, you know, things aren't getting done because, you know, no one wants to really talk about them. I mean. Yeah, or, or things get put aside because everyone's like, oh, I don't want to deal with it. Whatever, yeah. whatever it may be. Yeah, but uh, it yeah. is. But it is interesting having those kind of conversations, basically in front of a large audience. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know how large, but just in, in front of other people. Yeah, uh, you know. But yeah, it's interesting. I didn't really think about that. And and that's what we do every week. I mean, this kind of this podcast has become our weekly team meeting. You know? Yeah. Team of two. <laughs> Us two and our cats. Yeah. <laughs> our, our rag- They're not really listening, I don't think. They are our ragtag group of cats. I was uh, <laughs> on the back porch where the sun's out, like it's really nice outside, and our cats are all kind of like lying out in the sun on our back deck, and <laughs> we just really do have this ragtag group of cats, like a couple old cats, like yep, a little baby old, cat. A little baby like, cat, yeah. a middle-aged right. cat. Yeah, but they all kind of like they're a, they're a bit of a gang, you yep, know. They're definitely like a gang, a forest cat gang. <laughs> yep, just came out of the forest. All rescued out of the forest. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I like I like the fact that we can talk about you know stuff uh, uh, on a podcast. Well, no, I mean just we. Oh, in general, me, me and you can talk about things. Yeah, I mean, like you it. said, it's not always easy. I mean, there are certain things where. You know, decisions have to get made and, you know, you're like, I don't know the right answer. There's never a right answer. So we just have to make a decision and who's right, who's wrong. Uh, you know, if you make a decision and it's the, in quotes, the wrong one, like how, how do you know? Right. <laughs> so, you know, obviously that's always a struggle, all those things. I mean, you know, and what's important at the end of the day, and I think that's why when we have team meetings or when we actually argue or fight or whatever that and i think this is true that we always know we're all, each on the same team like like we're all on the same hmm. team no i'm just kidding that yeah we respect each other yeah it's like that's really big deal like i'm always i always look to you to make sure is she respecting me? Am I re- re- respecting you? Oh, trust me. I hear it all the time. <laughs> I hear it all the time. You got to respect each other. That we have each other's backs. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. That I want you to always know if there's something wrong, I got you. <laughs> oh, good. You know? I know. No, I believe you. Right? Yep. Because, you know, as I've said before, I grew up in a house where that was not true. Yep. People did not have each other's backs. It was kind of every person for themselves. Yep. You know, people would fight, fight behind closed doors. Things were never resolved. Yeah. And, you know, it was like years of just grossness. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not the way I want to live No, my life, trust me. You know. Uh, you've made it very clear from the beginning. And so have I, actually. I remember in the beginning of yeah. our relationship where I would, I would 
just say that this is what's going to happen. I remember. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the first time <laughs> you laid down the law. Yeah. I think it really changed. It was very early on. Our Like very early, like within a few weeks. When maybe. you were living in Boston yeah. and I was living in New York City. Yeah. Long so, distance. Long distance. Really so it was already kind of like, yeah, this isn't going to be a thing, you know? And I remember we would talk on the phone. Yes, yeah. we would talk on the phone. And I remember I we were talking on the phone and I was also Oh, you were emailing I was also oh, I, was so I was also on the internet and I was so mad. I was like emailing people, you know, I was just like doing stuff. I was like multitasking yeah, and sure. you were like, Stop. If you're gonna like, talk to me, you have to stop doing everything and you have to talk to me. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this now, isn't just like some casual person i'm talking so to. what what, what like, was going through your mind that you, you were okay like emailing did it I mean, did, I did you know. think like i do oh, that now with just... other people i, mean, I know i will yeah. sure but like usually you're in the same room so you're like having conversation looking at your thing right. and like going back to it but on the phone it's a it's different you know yeah. a little bit i don't know i mean i i don't think you remember like those were really early days of our its relationship but that was yeah that was important for me i was like oh you you know, she's like setting like a boundary. Yeah. And, you know, I either need to choose like, who is she I to need tell to me <laughs> what to someone. do? Like, I don't care about you that much that I'm just going to keep doing this. Like, I just won't talk to you. Or yeah. I was like, oh, no, I, you know, if I want to talk to this girl, I need yeah. to like, <laughs> like focus. And she wants my attention. Right. And she deserves my attention. That's you know? right. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of time to email when you get off the I'll phone. I'll tell you another time. I know. <laughs> okay. We Wait, am like, I going to have to get an example for you? No, I've had lots of examples. You moved to New York City into my apartment. Yeah. You know? It was a very, it was a quick romance. Although I don't think we moved into your apartment. We moved into our own apartment, but I started staying at For a short apartment. period of time. Yeah. And we were looking for an our apartment own apartment together. because I was a living with like, in like four other guys. Four guys <laughs> in like a three bedroom it was house. Horrible. One guy lived in like a closet. Yeah, he was all not good. even joking. I envied that guy because he was paying like one seventy five a month. I so I would have lived in that. Anyway, in Manhattan, we were looking for our own apartment, and you know it's stressful, like trying to find yeah, an it's apartment. Hard. It's and expensive, so right? We were going around, and I remember one time we were up in Harlem, and we were talking to a woman, and she was showing us her apartment that she was doing. And she was asking us questions, and I kept jumping in, talking, oh. like, here's the answer, yes, yes, yes. Oh. And I remember afterwards, we were walking away, and you got so mad at me. And I was really, I was flummoxed. You were like, <laughs> you have to stop talking over me. Yeah, you are you interrupting me. You have to me. stop interrupting me. Yeah. You have to, like, if someone asks us questions, I want to be able to also answer. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. You know, it was a... <laughs> totally fair boundary. Look, we still have that. Yeah. Look, and honestly, we have, I will say, you know, we've been, I think we said this when my sister was here. We were like having dinner with them and we were like, how long have we been together? And then you're like, oh, 16 years. And her and her boyfriend have been together for three years. And they kind of looked at us like, oh my yeah. God. But like there have been so many times too um, where like, I'll try to complete your sentence or yeah, I do that all the time still where you're thinking of something and I'm like, Oh, this thing. You're like, that's not what I was going to say. Right. You're like, don't interrupt me. You know, yeah. I think that's a constant battle with lots of, um, lots of couples, but I, but I also see, um, in my past and a lot of people's past, uh, men will dominate the conversation and women just do not have room. And so I just do not, like from the beginning, I was just like, I will not stand for that. <laughs> yep, that's true. And, and you were okay with that, I, so that's good. I, I appreciate, uh, you know, like the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. I will say, sometimes the rules apply to me, <laughs> but not to you. to you. So I have to be like, remind you, right? Well, and if I have to play by these rules, you have to play by the rules. So. And then I yell and I'm like, no, I'm the exception to the yeah, rule. So it's fun. Uh, yeah. We definitely go back and forth. But, um, um, yeah. So that's, you know, that's, I, I think anyone that runs a business with their partner, like it, I'm sure it is a constant struggle. And, you know, if people don't feel heard, if people don't feel respected, I just yeah. don't see a long history 
for that thing, you know, or at least a, a, like a happy one, you know. Right, right, sure. Yeah. So. Hey, would you enjoy talking about eBay right now? <laughs> Specifically eBay? End therapy session. On to eBay. Spring 2021 seller update. Yeah, can you give me, give me a rundown? For anyone who is new to eBay, this is the eBay thing every spring, summer, and now fall. So it's every quarter? It's three times a year. There's a winter Ooh, one. No, I anyway, don't know. so they eBay basically announces changes. Yeah. And, and that's fine. That's what we want. We want eBay to evolve. We want it to improve. We want eBay to like get rid of the bad stuff, do the good stuff. You yeah. know, the online e-commerce world mm-hmm. is a dynamic, fluid yes. environment. And we want eBay to continue. Right. Okay. Yes. Here are the changes that are coming. Whew. The big one, I think, for a lot of us, or those of us that have store subscriptions, they are changing yes. what you get for each subscription. Yes. So, like, for us, we're an Anchor subscription. And we pay $299 a month, and we get 10000 fixed price yeah. items. That's a lot of money. I will tell but you that. $300 a month. It's probably the biggest... You know, chunk of our fee. Well, it's not because final value fees is more. But anyway, it's, it's a big. large chunk. They are now raising it from ten thousand to twenty five thousand, which we don't need. We have seventy five hundred items. We will, we will probably never even hit ten thousand. Right. But the anchor is the way it should be now. Premium, which is the subscription under it, they're going from a thousand to ten thousand. So it's like premium is like the new anchor. anchor. Um, in here, I'll, I'll do a quick. So, so there's starter. That's two hundred and it's fifty items. Okay, it's new, a starter store. Store. Okay, right? it is a store. No changes. What uh, what price is that? Do we know? I don't know. Okay, I think like, you I don't think have it's the like prices. five bucks, but I don't know. It's like five basic. Bucks. <laughs> okay, going from three hundred and fifty to a thousand. Premium, mm-hmm. 1000 to 10000 Anchor, 10000 to 25000 Enterprise, 100000 to no change. So, Was there an enterprise before? Yeah. How do I not know that? Yeah, it's, it's newish. Yeah. So that's big for us. So starting April 1st, we can change our store from Anchor to Premium. So going from $300 a month to like, I think it's $59 or something. And supposedly, That's people insane. are posting screenshots of, of conversations they're having with eBay people on like Facebook that eBay will waive the uh, penalty fee for, for changing, changing because, or canceling, right? And for canceling. So, uh, and that is until April thirtieth. So we have like one month, right, to do that change. It's nothing will change on our end. It's just instead of It's just of what being, you pay for. I mean, so uh, we'll be saving like, I don't know, whatever. I don't even do if, the math. If you it's said like, it's $60 a month and we're paying 300 So it's like 200 and it's $40 That's a it's, month it's crazy. times 12. We'll save, yeah, like 2800 bucks if I'm doing that. I mean, right. that's really great. Yeah. It's really helpful. So I have it on our calendar. And we're gonna I'm going to call. Over. So what I'll do, so what do I do? Do I just like call anchor support and say, I want to switch down? I think you just go just to go the, subscription the subscription page on your, on our like, uh, and make sure home. they waive the fee. Yeah. But even the good thing for us is our subscription ends May 1st. Right. So even if we were to get hit, here with that penalty, it'd just be $100 for yeah. a single month. Which so it's insane. really not a big deal for us. But for anyone who might have just re-upped their subscription. Right, recently, yeah. And then, so then obviously, people who are now in premium. Yeah. They could jump down to basic. Because a premium store up until now had, had a thousand items right. in it. Now a basic will have a thousand items. So premium people can... Can jump and down. And Okay, whoa. And this is where it's like, man, people are really going for it. You know, supposedly the collectibles is still free to list. And people are like, I only have I only have collectibles. collectibles. So why do I even need like a basic? Maybe why I do just I have a like a starter yeah. subscription because I don't really. Yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, people are like really trying to maximize. They should. 
Um, you know, fees are a lot. And, you know, it's interesting. It's just not very common for eBay to give up money. <laughs> Usually so, all the prices go up, up, I'm up. I'm super skeptical. I'm like, what are they doing? So here are people's theories, yes. hypotheses. Now, it is true. Final value fees go up by 0.2%. Okay. Which to me doesn't seem like a big deal. And the good thing is if I sell, I'm happy to give up another 0.2% if I sell more. Yep. So doesn't. But maybe they've done the uh, a math on it where if they make it cheaper to put items onto eBay, there'll be more items. They'll get an, an extra 0.2% and... You know, some yeah. Harvard MBA is like, yeah, and then if you put it on the spreadsheet, yeah, you get exactly. this much more. I don't know. The other thing is, I think that eBay does have to start competing with all these other online sites that are don't put barriers to entry. There are no fees for a listing. It's yeah. only final value fees right. when you and sell. So, you know, Amazon. Like, like Facebook. Right. Amazon has it where what is like $40 a month to be like a business. Right. And to and then it's as much as you want yeah. to list. Facebook's and, free, yeah. and then and then if you sell it, I guess if you sell it and ship it, and get a payment through Facebook, then you get a fee. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. So I and I think also someone my cottage was had a really good spiel on our uh, board on our. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A uh, message board. Um, they were like. You know, in the early days, eBay would make a lot of money by charging you to post items. Right. You know, especially in the auction days. Yeah. Someone would have an item and they would keep putting it up for auction. And right. You get. It wouldn't sell. And eBay right. is, I mean, you know, they get a dollar every time you yeah. put something up. Whether it sells or item. not, they don't care. So that was their model. Right. And now, the good thing is, they seem to be changing their business model to where they only make m- money if we make money. Right. And that's good. Which is good because so we want to make money right. and they want to make so money. So as they said, eBay and our like goals are aligned now. Yeah. You know, and that's how I think it should be. You yeah. Know? If absolutely. I don't sell, so they should put their money into whatever making sure promotions I sell stuff. and advertising and everything else. Yep. So I agree. That's a big one. And the other one, I mean, I don't really care that much, but like uh, my cottage, she'll be or they'll be happy that code coupons are coming. So if you can actually go into your eBay store, I guess, and and make a coupon that has a specific code and send it to like a specific person. Oh, uh, that's interesting. So so if someone's like wanting a percentage off or something no i think it's more for you know like being like a regular retail store where if you have like regular customers if you can be like here's a coupon oh, like you could being, print it yeah. out you could print it out and send it to your customers right. like get either through emails get or something off or yeah okay you could print it out and put it in the package yeah, yeah. I guess you can track it and see i, I right. don't really know but that's well that's cool if people want to use it thing. i don't know i don't know <laughs> It, it, it's a computer. It's a computer. Uh, QR code. And I think that's, you know, there's some other things, but I think those were the big ones. So that's really good for us. I mean, so it's on our calendar. Yeah. April 1st. Change the subscription. It's, it's not a joke. April, <laughs> April Fool's uh, Day. We yeah. will downgrade, but it, nothing will happen other than, I guess, we will uh, won't be able to call anchor support, supposedly. And number two... We won't get as many free... Uh, oh, like shipping supplies? Right, which is not a big deal. I have, have so many shipping <laughs> supplies that Jay <laughs> constantly looks at me every day and is like... Using, Gee, he goes like this. Are you using... Do you want this box? <laughs> because we're putting a cafe together, we're getting boxes and boxes of like cafe wear and... Utensils on our back deck, crib. there is a pile like, of boxes, and I'm just like, do we? And do I boxes? sorted through them. Do, and I, do, 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 do you? You okay. go like this. Do you need this box? As That's a great you. box. Look, yesterday I had to ship a 25 inch tall lamp. Thank God I had a box okay. for it. Well, look, just saying. It's just a question. I also have another lamp I have to ship that I am not looking forward to. I will say that is a a thing that I have to remind you of. That if you get mad at me, 
I'll just ask you oh a question. Oh my god. And you're like, you guys, whoa, listen to whoa. me. I'm like, listen I'm just asking me. a it's question. Like, it's like, like, I'm not, I'm not judging you. Oh, I'm not, no I'm not, judgment. There's no subtle, it's like, there's no like undertone oh, to this question. It's see, just a I question. Think, Tell I me think yes, you think no. that there's no subtle undertones. Like, I, I come to my place at the kitchen table this morning, right. and there are like three different containers of food I'm from the fridge. You. That basically, like, you took it out of the fridge. Why do you think they were there? And, and you were like... Why do you think they were there? You got to eat this or you got to get rid of it. One thing I ate for breakfast, one thing I got rid of, one thing I put back to eat for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jay. Are you going to eat this? Um, or what? Or what? You eat this or what? Anyway, okay, yeah, so that's I, enough of our... All right, eBay for this week. We sold 36 items. Oh, boy. Is that a lot? Is that a little? I don't know. I think it's a little. Well, how much money did we make? I don't we know. grossed one thousand nine hundred ninety-three. Oh wow, seventy-seven cents. But that's including shipping stuff. fees and taxes. Okay, our net sales after all the fees net one thousand three hundred eighty-one dollars and one penny. You know what? It is so weird. We sell completely individual weird items. Vintage, yeah, one of a kind. Like, we, we we don't sell not like, even one of a kind iPhone things cases, not in quantity like we don't one have one t-shirt that I found at a thrift store my point is yeah we sold within $30 the same amount a week ago that's so weird it's very strange I know what does it mean it's very strange um, how consistent sales are even though we have no way to control yeah. our sales, and yeah. it's very strange. It's strange. Um, but there were some days, like yesterday, I don't think we sold a single thing yesterday. Yeah, we sold a couple, like, little oh, shirts. Oh, little, little but, things. Yeah. It just, it just, there's some slow days. Mm-hmm. There are some great days where you're like, ooh, I sold something for over $100. And then yeah. there are days where you're like, I sold a pair of gloves for $7. Yeah, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You know, our best sale was like a hand carved bowl. Oh, that bowl! A wooden bowl, one hundred and sixty dollars. A live edge on it. That was a beautiful bowl. Yeah. Um, um, I I like really packed. I would have never thought when we started selling in two thousand eight <laughs> that we could sell a wooden bowl for one hundred and sixty dollars. Unbelievable! To it was me. cherry. <laughs> I think it was cherry. It was a yeah. beautiful bowl. I don't know how someone made that, but it was cool. We did sell a lot of clothes and shoes. I mean, not, yeah. not a lot, but probably about 25% of our sales. Um, we sold Consistent. some artwork. Yeah. I yeah, mean, some artwork. I'm I sure artwork. you weren't happy, but we did These sell lamps. a lot of glassware and lamps Look, it, and it like doesn't, dishes. No, I'm not unhappy because it moves stuff off the shelves. It's just taking the time to pack it. Right. Um because I need time to do that. It's not like, sure. you know, oh, throw a t-shirt in a poly mailer. You know, right. and that, those are great. You're right. just like, psh, 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 I could do like a hundred of those. But the reason why we sell that stuff now is because it's cheap to get. And it's I guess to get that's and really... people don't want to buy it. As much as I've been trying to chase like a options. fantasy of like, how do we just, you know, buy things for a hundred dollars, sell them for 500, you know, why, you know, like I, that, that our, our, I think our nature at yeah. Scavengers is... Where do we find the cheapest stuff? Right, that people don't want. And sell it for the most we can. Yep. And now it seems to be ceramics. Look, that stuff, that stuff, it's so funny because I'm always joking with my helper who's 16. And I'm just like, I know, I'm giving you all this random, like, right now it's like brass trinkets. Like, I don't know, lots of brass candlesticks for. Some auction we went to, they were like, every brass candlestick we've got in the last six months, put put it on this table. And we happened to buy that table. Um, but that stuff sells. Like, people want it for their wedding decoration. They want it for their mantle. Like, they want it mismatched. And yeah. it's now it's cottage core. I mean, um, I, I buy... I subscribe to a handful of design magazines. Yes. Because El I, Decor. I like them. What's we're, that really fancy one? Uh... A world of interiors. Yep. Oh my god! A world of interiors. Check it out. It's is you're like you're these design. people anyway. have money. But if you just check out the pictures, yeah. And there's like little cool things. Yeah. Everywhere. Eclectic. Like it's not cluttered. It's just very design well. And you know, some people are like, "Who cares about that?" But you know, <laughs> it, <laughs> what was that voice? I don't but, know. Who cares? You know, I think there are people that get yes. to certain times in their life and they're like, it's important 
the space I'm creating for right. myself. Especially and, during COVID. And that's the kind of things we see at auctions. Yeah. And now I will check out tables of stuff for, for, for sale. And I'm like, wow, there, you know, there's four or five things in this table that I've seen in pictures. Right. You know? Things that uh, are similar. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, and I feel like. And the, that's who we're selling it to. The know? design aesthetic right now. Di- just different genres of design aesthetic doesn't matter if it's Hollywood Regency or Cottagecore or whatever. It's very eclectic. Like right. all these things are not just like I got them from the same designer right. and the same color and the same pattern. It's like very mix and match. Like that. Sh- there's a show called Stylish with Jenna Lyons, mm. and it's on HBO. You can stream it, and she says high low. So she's like. Get something that's really like high end and beautiful, and then and get expensive and right. expensive. I mean, your right. couch, right. for instance, like whatever, and then find some stuff at the thrift store to throw in there. Right. And it's kind of got like a nice mix, you know. You should see my couch, it's definitely low. <laughs> well, with, with four cats, you <laughs> need low. couches, are, comfortable though. Couches are always temporary, yeah. Uh, customer issues, none really. We had like yeah, a, no. I think we had a return or something normal. I had return. like a return of a skirt. We have a couple of more returns coming. It's but just, not big. Most of them are like, it didn't fit. And yeah. you're like, okay. But, I mean, this is common. A guy made an offer on a pair of shoes. Oh, yeah. I accepted. He immediately writes and be like, what size are these? I'm like, it, the size and the measurement is right there. Right. <laughs> so then he's like, uh, I don't he, want them. Well, I mean, he, he was like, well... And what is it in, in EU. EU? I'm like, I, you know, just I don't get know. a converter. Yeah. yeah. It's very strange. It's so, like you just Google it, but no big deal. No, unpaid we, item. We, we don't even answer him anymore. We just yeah. unpaid item. He made the offer, you know. So, like, the questions should come before the offer. It's, we did. I will talk about this customer issue that we didn't talk about because we just were like, Ooh, whatever. Tell me. Um, we sold. We have these church pews. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, we have. I think they're twelve feet long. Yeah. They're just like the crazy. We bought them off a friend of mine. We were like, we'll use them for the cafe. And then later we were like, that is the crazy. We don't yeah. know what we were thinking. But um, so someone bought. We have four of them. Someone on eBay in the next town over bought one. Did not pay for it. Ghosted us. They're like, I'm gonna come get it as soon as I can. No response. Wrote them three emails. Whatever. Unpaid item case. But then someone bought all four of them on right. Facebook. Yep. So it kind of turned out. So is that good. unpaid? Uh, is that unpaid item case done? It's closed. Okay. Yeah. But I didn't relist it on yeah. eBay because it already obviously I, I, we already sold them. I need them out of my storage. They're still so the problem. My storage. The problem with the person in on Facebook was. They kind of need us to deliver them, which is okay. We're like, that's fine. And they can't, they can't have them delivered till like March 18th. Right. So they're well, still sitting in. Our- they were very like, uh, I'm waiting for this storage, you know, maybe March. So we told them. Yeah. We will hold them till March 18th. You said 13th, but they, then they said, I can get them on the 18th. And we said, send us $200. Oh, for, from Venmo. Right. Yeah. I said, I'll hold them for and you. And then after the 18th, they'll be gone. So, you know, yeah. that's the interesting thing. And, and they... I they mean, Venmoed me I right mean, they away. They like, we could just, whatever, be a horrible people. But, you know, we'll... I will honor that till the 18th. But after that, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll probably just give them away. I, I just need them gone because... <laughs> Well, just like drive, because I know where their house is or was, or we we just have them in their front porch. I'll just like put. I'll just like put them in front of the house. Like here, four twelve foot wooden pews for you. So things we learned in the forum. Yes. So they're very interesting question from Julie. So she, from my understanding, I don't think I'm again talking out of school. She's writing this publicly on the internet, and yeah, nobody knows who she, she is. This person. She had like a, a good paying job. Yeah. Like a corporate job. Corporate job, office job. And I think the story was is like it was one of the jobs that starts off as kind of like freelance mm. and then turns into yeah. a full time job. A freelance jobs can be kind of cool, you know, like contract yeah. work because, you know, you do little short term. Yeah. We take that kind of work. Yeah, I take sure. that work. Get a chunk of cash, but then go on. But yeah, those jobs can turn into basically full time jobs. Well, anyway, she finally got out of that. She's like, I don't like this anymore. Yeah. 
So she's trying to turn her eBay store, in which it, she's always had. Right. Like, I think it's a smallish one, you know. How do you turn that into a full-time job? And yeah. her questions was, you know, like, I get up in the morning and I, like, walk my dogs and, I don't know, I, mm-hmm. like, work out mm-hmm. and then I like, eat something and then it's, like, noon and then, you know. Then work for the rest of the day. <laughs> and then, like... You That's know, my answer to you. I do a little bit, and then like I get on the internet, and then like it's in the afternoon. And I got, you know, uh-oh. so the question is, how do you be productive? Yeah, as a full time eBay person, <laughs> I have the answer. What's the answer? Your bank account starts emptying because you have to pay bills. <laughs> right. That's what makes you productive. Yeah, I mean, needing money. You know, there are so, especially here in the states. Oh my god, the this like productivity. <sighs> Obsession with guru book. Yeah. There's, you know, in, you can buy all these things and yeah. people give little hints. But, I mean, honestly, for us, the answer it was not having a safety net. Right. Like, there, I mean, yeah, it's exactly. like you said. Yep. It's just like ride or die. Look you know? at my bank account. It's like if we don't sell these things. Yeah. I can't pay my mortgage. We're going to have to find a job because yeah. we can't, you know, pay Wait, and and, and rent. boy do I not want to have to find a job. Right. Like that is, you know, a in quotes job. Right. Working I mean, for someone else. And you know, again, I remember that. It was $2000. Like that's what our number was. Yeah. We needed it was 2, to make $2000 to pay our mortgage, to pay our bills, yep. to fill up the car, mm-hmm. to eat. Mm-hmm. That's what we needed. And so No luxury. So I was like, okay, so we need to make, you know, like Eighty, sixty, eighty dollars a day, right? You know, and we're selling like ten dollar items, so we need to be selling, you know, like right, we're selling five $10 items. Oh, all. but it, what if we start selling twenty dollar items? Right. You know, and so we just start doing <laughs> the, numbers. the numbers, and you just keep track of that stuff. And yeah. then you were, I mean, I mean, again, you were the engine of this. You are a listing machine, yeah. And I'd be taking photos. You would yep. list, and you know, we would. You know, do like we're going to do twenty things yeah. today. I mean, if you go things. to our manifesto yep. our website, that's is that of, still there? Oh kind of old now, but <laughs> that was our thing. List twenty items a day yep. until we hit five hundred. Right. And five hundred items seems like when we were starting to get regular sales. Right. This is yeah ten Long years old now. now. So, so a I, thousand. Let's that, let's up that to a thousand. That now. a math may now change because so many people are selling online. But you know. Um, it's basically like building a house. Yeah. You know, well, you, you, you've just got to lay a couple rows of bricks every day. Yep. And then over time, you you're going to have a house. Yeah. You can't build a house if you're not out there sweating every day. Right. You know, that's, that's my thing. Like, I think I was just talking about this with you yesterday. We right. talk about it constantly where I, I, we meet people, we know people, we talk to people and they're like, I just want this thing over here. Right. That's really expensive and unattainable at the moment. And I, my answer always is just like, well, do the work, yeah. like do the numbers and do the work. <laughs> like there's no secret. No right. one's going to hand you that money. <laughs> I mean, I think that's why we... If, if so, good for you, but... Right. Yeah, no. You know? so, I mean. so, so motivation, I mean, honestly, our motivation has always been what the goals are. What's the yeah. goal for what you're making money for? Yeah. If you, like, for example, have a spouse who has a full-time job and you're not like, oh, if I don't do this eBay store, I'm um, not going to be able to pay my mortgage or my electricity. Well, then what motivation is there? I don't know. Well, some people are not full-time eBayers, but they're, they had, right. They run crazy part-time businesses, Yeah, yeah. (laughs) you know, and they're committed because I think that they are like, my eBay money is going to pay my mortgage right or pay it's off for my this. school debt right or it's paying for my kid to go to college it's like they depend on that right. money it's, for something it's a purpose and they put aside time either two hours after work every day right. or all of saturday or you know they wake up early you know but they right. have time aside and i think that's the thing i think you know you just need to find for yourself. Are you like a morning person? Right. So I wake up and get your twenty items done, or however. And then have the rest of the day yeah. in the a morning, and then have the rest of the day. But this thing of like, and I get it, like procrastinating the guilt. So if you're not really enjoying your time off, but right. then you're not enjoying it because you're not doing anything. It's just right. like you're always unhappy. I mean, that's the other thing too. 
I mean, it's not for everybody. Yeah. Full time eBaying. Yeah, I don't it's know. A lot. It's it, we've talked about it. It's so unglamorous. Yeah, right? it's so this is unglamorous. not fun. Instagram laughing <laughs> flowers. It's yeah, just like yeah. it's just kind of a grind. You have a pile of stuff. It can look like junk, and you right. have to make value out of that. Well, that's that's in real quick, and yeah. so I don't know. If you're someone that has a career and you're thinking yeah. it was too much, I, I I like this other world, I you know where yeah. I could have my time. Maybe the answer is, especially if you have like a a nest egg, maybe you just need to take a sabbatical. Yeah, take six months off. Right, eat into your savings, but you know, do yoga. Do exercise. Right. Hang out here with your pets or your kids. Yeah. And sleep in and just enjoy that time. Right. And then go back to getting your career job again. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like that's, you know, that's a valid thing too. You know, mm-hmm. you don't have to, you know, think you could sell on eBay. You yeah. Know? Well, look, like, like you said, the motivation to not have to get a job, like when we first were renovating our house um, and paying for that in cash, um, you know, I, there was uh, an opportunity for me to get an editing job, a video editing job in Washington, D.C. And I applied for it. But I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to like commute to D.C. every day or have to get like rent a room in dc i don't want to live in dc that's why we live out in the country i don't want to live there so what did i do i sat at a folding table in our living room (laughs) where there were no walls there was barely a floor we had internet me and three guys were were like trying to doing re- renovate the house around, around me right. and i was just listing yeah. i just sat there and i listed yep. um and there were bins of shoes like, just, it was just on the floor it, it, yeah but it was i was like but, but was, this works but it was exciting yeah it was it like was this fun. works you know yeah um so yeah, I mean, your motivation is going to be different. Like everybody has their own motivation, and for us, it was to not get a job, to cover our bills, and yeah. to have our time. Yeah, I mean, and, you know? and again, and we'll wrap this up as go on forever. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think no one should feel bad about having downtime. Right. So if you have been working a really stressful job, maybe take some time off. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But if it's but if you're really feeling like I'm just being lazy, then just mm-hmm. I don't know. Don't be lazy. Get yeah. to work. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Like, oh, I don't you know. feel bad about having downtime. Get it done. Because I never have any. Right. So. <laughs> oh no. I don't feel bad about it because there are. I <laughs> saw you me. making memes. I made That's some. Not... I made some animated gifs on yeah. the internet yesterday. Yeah. That was very fun. <laughs> um, so okay, that was my hobby. So we have no calls this week, <gasps> which is. Fine. Everybody's satisfied with their good. lives. But if you would like to send in either a question or a comment, or if you want to tell or a people story, stuff, you can call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an audio file from your phone. It'll sound like you're in the same room with us and, and everything. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Yep. Okay, uh, coffee this week. We are getting so close to opening this place. It's like so the close. The stress level is just rising. The stress rising. level is the highest it can be. But it's good. It's just like we always, I always say. It's that kind of uh, performance anxiety. anxiety where you're like, you, you're, you're about like to I'm go. about to go on stage. Yeah, right. And so it's not like bad, I'm a bad person. It's more about like I'm so excited. I'm a bad person. Anxiety. What's going to happen, you know, kind yeah. of anxiety. Yeah. So, uh, but... The cool thing is we are a roasting, me and you. I'm roasting two days a week. So our partners have time just to focus on the cafe. Because yeah. And we want them to do that. Staff. Yeah. Like they're, hiring people. We're hiring like, he, he's talking about hiring five to seven people. I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's like a real business. <laughs> it is. Uh, you better know it's a that. real business. A coffee I would suggest. Yes. I would love to hear this. Guatemalan. Yeah. Guatemalan's really so we good. Have 10 coffees yeah about yeah uh this is like one of those coffees that people don't buy as much as i think that they yeah. should 
It's like a medium light. Medium. I would call it a medium. A yeah. medium. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good. But it's got a nice, really nice yeah. flavor. Um, I would say, yeah, Guatemalan is a good choice. I think you should check it out. I'm going to roast some tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, if you are looking for a coffee and would like to support us, try Guatemalan. Try Guatemalan this You go week. to broadporchcoffee.com. Yep. Come right from our hearts into your Look. Home. You're going to get coffee roasted by me, packed by Jay, right. and shipped by both of us. That's right. We will be... No joke. And you can imagine us with an Ikea bag. Going bag, to the post office. With all the coffee <laughs> envelopes. It's true. We go to the post office. There's this like goth country girl who works there. <laughs> she's, and she's awesome. And she always says, oh, it does smell so good. And, and she like, orders yeah. coffee from it's us. It's like... It's like the small town fantasy. It, always, and it's true. And yeah. it's real. And it's coming straight to your right. mailbox. Anyway, this podcast is ending. In three, three, two, two one. one. Bye.